بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This tongue, this body is an amana from Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and we need to utilize it in avenues where we will preserve and protect our dunya and akhira. That's why everything does not need to be talked about whether it's physically, whether it's in social media, whether it's on different chat platforms. Why do we need to talk about everybody and everything? Reality is every big problem, every major problem starts when a person worries about everyone else besides himself. He's worried about the world, not himself. Psychologists say a person who's not happy in his life wants to discuss others. So we have been encouraged to hide flaws of our, our own flaws and the flaws of others as well. So privacy is an important usul, is an important principle in deen. That's why it is said, when you throw dirt, you lose ground. When you throw dirt, you lose ground. So Quran also explains this principle of privacy, not exposing the faults of people. وَلَوْ لَا إِذَ سَمِعْتُمُوهُ قُلْتُمْ مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا And why did you not when you heard it say it is not right for us to speak of this it was not right for us to discuss this the slander, it was accusations we shouldn't have been discussing this some commentators have narrated the incident of Aisha radiallahu anha etc. Another incident has been mentioned as well in uh, Ibn Kathir rahimallah when Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma came to visit Aisha radiallahu anha while she was on her deathbed and uh, Abdullah ibn Abdurrahman her nephew was by her side so he informs her that Ibn Abbas has requested permission. He is one of your best sons. So she replied, Spare me from Ibn Abbas and his praise. He is a reader of the book. He is glorified. Allah has been praised. He is a man of knowledge. Give him permission so he can bid you farewell. So she gives permission. And then as he enters, he gives her glad tidings. Bashar, good news for you. O Aisha, O mother of the believers, soon your hardship, your difficulties will disappear and you will meet your loved ones, Muhammad and his companions. The Ruh will soon leave. You are the most beloved, the dearest of the wives of the Messenger of Allah. And uh, your innocence was declared from above the seven heavens that not a single masjid on earth that these verses of your innocence will be recited day and night. It will be recited day and night. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exonerated Aisha radiallahu anha on the incident of Ifq where she was slandered. So there will happen in the life of a believer where he is accused. We take precaution and after precaution if it does happen then we need to see now to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for his assistance. Then if the verse continues, your necklace fell on the night of Abwa and uh, this is the, another benefit that you had brought to the Ummah and in trying to find the necklace, dawn broke, there was no water and the ayat were revealed for tayammum. 
So he's encouraging that, Oh Aisha, this happened because of you. You are so blessed. Look at her kafir. Look at Aisha radiallahu anha. Kafir. And now the billah, there are people on earth who still have the audacity to speak bad about our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. And that's one of the signs of Qiyamah. وَلَأَنَا آخِرُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ أَوَّلَهَا When the latter part of this Ummah will curse the first part that is Sahaba. When the last part of this Ummah will curse the first part of this Ummah Sahaba رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن So she says, Oh Ibn Abbas, spare me all this. By Allah, I wish I'd become a thing of non-existence. I wish I would be forgotten. So these were the sifat, the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen, Sahaba radiallahu anhum. So we've been disciplined in this ayat that uh, if anything is unbefitting and it is mentioned about a good person, still think good of, good of them and don't feel ill or bad towards them in any way. So, uh, do not speak about it. In Allah Ta'ala tajawaza li ummati amma haddathat bihi anfusuha ma lam taqul aw ta'mal. Allah will excuse my ummah for anything that occurs in their minds as long as they do not speak about it or act upon it. Rawah al-Bukhari wa Muslim. So, we have to be very careful if news does come to us, investigate, verify, don't forward, don't uh, be too hasty to distribute that information without verification, otherwise a person will have serious regrets. Like there was a story of a newspaper reporter who was assigned to report on a forest fire. So it was not possible from the ground level to do reporting. So uh, the editor hired a light aircraft for aerial reporting. And he was told that the plane would be ready at a small rural airfield. So the reporter was in a haze, drove at top speed to the airfield, saw the small plane warming up on the runway. He raced to the plane, jumped in and screamed to the pilot, let's go, let's go. So the aircraft soared into the sky and uh, gave the towers instructions, I want to fly over the north side of the fire and make three or four low level passes. That's what the reporter said. This is my instruction. So you need to radio it in. So the pilot was shocked. He said, why do you want to fly over the fire and even more dangerous to make low level passes? So the reporter again looks shocked. And what do you mean? Why? So then uh, the pilot, why? So I can give an account, an accurate report uh, for my reporting. I'm a journalist. I'm a reporter. And that's why I'm on this flight. So then the pilot confused thought and said, you mean you're not the instructor? You mean you're not the instructor? So sometimes in haste, we think so, we're going to do something and achieve something. But in the end, it comes back to us and the consequences are even more worse. So before we talk about anybody else, let us look at ourselves, don't worry about everybody else, and, and sort ourselves. So uh, there was a wife who was keeping a close watch on her new neighbors. She told her husband, they seem a perfectly devoted couple. Every time he goes, he kisses her, even blows his kisses from the car. So I said, 
What kind of a husband you are? You don't even do that. Why don't you do that? So the husband told his wife, I hardly know the woman. I hardly know the woman. So we need to sort our own selves out. So no matter what the situation, we should never give up hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter where, how far down the line a person has gone, never give up hope in Allah. A person came to Manatani and said, I, I cannot fulfill the rights of Salah. Obviously the requisite of khushu and concentration. So Hazrat said that who can fulfill the rights of Salah? The fact that you've realized that you cannot, cannot fulfill the rights is already progress. We think so we have perfected our Salah, but no matter how far we've went and, and progress, we are still worthless. The fact that we make sajda to Allah, we should be hopeful that Allah will accept and have this remorse and regret that we cannot fulfill this amal and deed how it should have been done. And uh, make effort in that line and be hopeful from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what the halat and conditions, we should always be hopeful of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With regards to privacy, these home assistants, modern, modern gadgets, Amazon, Echo, Google, home devices. So Alexa, hey Google, all these uh, devices conduct searches, display videos, voice command. So these will report and you will find that there's a lot of evidence that proves that even uh, Amazon admits that the employees can listen to you through these devices and they keep the recordings inevitably. Likewise Google as well, so Allah knows best. So the more devices we put in our home, the vice, the more vices may enter. So if you want to stay away from vice, keep away from the device. Likewise you get these fancy doorbells by Amazon, etc. And uh, privacy issue, your movements when you come coming in, when you're going out, your home, your location, what you're between the other devices, they can populate serious info. Likewise, Allah make us more of televisions. So uh, nowadays you get the smart TVs and some people use them for the CCTV surveillance. We have to make sure that, try to get ones that don't have the embedded Wi-Fi uh, front-facing cameras because uh, this can be extremely ev invasive and, and, and they could be accessing a lot of information. So for example, Samsung has the smart TVs and uh, the intelligent TVs which control home automation, learn your interests, listen to your voice activation. They've got internal microphones, they've got internal cameras controlling your TV from your smartphone. So yeah, your privacy is literally invaded. And uh, according to the one of the sources, uh, the, these services, they actually collect information about your viewing history, networks, channels, websites visited, programs viewed, amount of time spent on viewing, usage information, then the, the, the feature of ACR, which is automatic content recognition. Or oh, these are the technologies to capture your TV viewing history. Besides that, behavioral and demographic data is breached. So, uh, how much of your content is collated? How much images, videos of your home you may be in your bedroom? 
and uh, compromise. So many, much of the information can be transmitted back to the manufacturer. And uh, it has been reported that just Samsung alone transmit through over 200 connections within 10 minutes of the subdomains. So that's the terms and the service that a person has agreed. So many gadgets, example, even the Kindle, Amazon collects and stores all the details and they profile you as well. So books purchase, what you've read, what you've searched for, the last page read, then uh, highlights, markings, the speed what you read a book, etc, etc, etc. So this data that is collected, this, the, 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 the log is, is very dangerous. One is the information that's breached, but by uh, accessing this data in law enforcement agencies or whether it's a civil litigation issue, then uh, your reading habits could be used against you. So we have to be very cautious. Likewise, this recently DNA kits. So uh, a person purchases this kit and uh, after doing the home tests with a swab or a saliva sa sample, you send to the company which now captures your genetic code. So uh, they, they provide for you a map of your genealogy. That's your family history, potential diseases, etc., etc., etc. But uh, how much of this information is shared with other agencies sold to third parties? And uh, it uh, could, could, could come back and bite a person as well. And a simple thing like this, why would the Pentagon in 2019 in an internal memo, they urged their military personnel that they shouldn't be taking any DNA tests, stating that it can create security risks which are unreliable, negatively affect service member careers. So these, these are things We've discussed fitness trackers as well between Google and Apple. And uh, why we're highlighting this is that uh, the, the, these uh, institutions have, uh, have, have wasted, have, have abused privacy. And that's a fundamental basic right of people. So it's your choice. It's your choice. Somebody who had some issues complained to Google and uh, this video was on YouTube. So they wanted it taken off. When they complained, their account was closed. So imagine you the complainant. But you're, because you don't have any privacy. You don't have a right to any privacy. So they actually close this person's account. So privacy is very important. It covers a lot of aspects. The people of Iman make sure they dot the I's and cross the T's when it comes to protecting the honor and is it amal for today is reading Salat with Jamaat that uh, it is better for a person to read with somebody than alone. And two people reading Salah are more pure, more better, more virtuous than reading alone. The more the number, the more the increments in that salah, the more beloved it is to Allah. So when performing salah as well, we should try to go to a place where jama'at is bigger. It is more beloved and mostly possible 
to be accepted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.